Yo, what's up YouTube? How you doing? It's your boy Zenith and today I've got the Fantasy Premier League's Game Week 3 review for you. We're going to look at what happened last weekend ahead of this weekend's fixtures. The reason I'm doing this in the middle of the two game weeks rather than straight after is just to give you a little of a reminder of what happened at the weekend. The transfer window closed and we've had some international fixtures as well. We're going to do it a bit differently this week as I cover the fixtures first. Then we're going to talk about the team of the week and then we're going to review the Fantasy Premier League Mini League YouTube table. So without further ado, let's jump straight into it. So the first game we're going to look at was the early kickoff on a Saturday and I did warn people not to captain anyone in the first fixture in case they're disappointed. But depending on who you had captained, you may not have been disappointed with this result as Manchester City, the reigning champions, took out the trash, also known as Banter FC, also known as Arsenal, who currently reside at the bottom of the table. And that takes some doing because we got Norwich in the Premier League this season. 5-0. We had goals from Ilkay Gundogan and Ferran Torres before Granit Xhaka saw a straight red, which led to 10-man Arsenal just being... Well, I mean, it just turned into attack versus defence training session, really, didn't it? Let's be honest. And City did not disappoint as they then put three more past Arsenal with Torres getting another, Gabriel Jesus getting on the score street, and even Rodri's little curler was finish. What a finish. Gabriel Jesus also picked up an assist alongside Ferran Torres and then Jack Grealish gets another attacking return this game week with another assist and Riyad Mahrez as well. Moving swiftly on to the three o'clock kickoffs, we're going to look at Aston Villa versus Brentford and Danny Ings didn't disappoint again. He didn't get a goal, but he did get an assist. This means Danny Ings has hit another attacking return. That's his third in three weeks after picking up two goals in the opening two fixtures. Ivan Tony punished Sellers this week after seeing an exodus of nearly half a million managers transfer him out as he scored in the seventh minute to go 1-0 up against Villa. Someone else tipped to do well in the Aston Villa side, Wendia, is the one who come up with the goal for them to equalise six minutes after Tony's goal. And Tony was assisted by Pontus Janssen, one of Brentford's defenders who has started the season pretty well uh, when it comes down to fantasy Premier League points. Next up is Brighton and Hove Albion versus Everton, a game where I really didn't want Everton to score. I had Sanchez in goal. I have no Everton attackers. And unless Luca Digne was going to whip in a cross or get a goal, I really wasn't interested in Everton scoring, but unfortunately Dominic Calvert-Lewin kept up his form, as did Damari Gray. And even though Gray isn't someone I tipped in the spotlight last week, it is someone I've been keeping an eye on. Although I did tip in my game week three preview, Dominic Calvert-Lewin, and what do you know, he picks up another goal. Assisted by Allen and with uh, players missing such as James Rodriguez and Gilfie Sigerton, Someone in the midfield is going to have to come up with that creative style of play to put through strikers with Charleston and Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Could Alan fill in here? Who knows? But a 4.5 million, if you need a bit of bench fodder, he's not a bad shout. Moving on to the next fixture, as the most northern team in the Premier League take on the most southern, we have Newcastle versus Southampton. This ended as a four-goal thriller, two goals apiece. And believe me, it really was a thriller. And when I say thriller, for those of you that do this, Sky Sports do a super six. If you guess six fixtures correctly, the, the exact result, they will pay out 250 grand and it's free to enter, right? Someone had the 250 grand in the bag until the 95th minute penalty was awarded to Southampton, which was subsequently converted by Ward Prowse in the 96th minute. I mean, that's not even taken into account that Newcastle took the lead first through Callum Wilson, someone else I tipped at the start of the season to do well and who has been scoring well before Mohamed El Yunusi equalised for Southampton. Then in the 91st minute, Newcastle probably think they've won the game as uh, St. Maximum comes through with a goal to make it 2-1. Only for Newcastle and whoever this poor randomer is who had that 250k in their grasp when the penalty was given away. A war price equalised. What, what mental game. If you've not seen the highlights, put it on. Next, we have Premier League New Boys up against the Foxes as Leicester are looking to bounce back from their loss against West Ham. And they did just that. But it wasn't easy. Jamie Vardy putting them up in the eighth minute with an assist from Ricardo Pereira. Someone I did mention to keep an eye out for a couple of weeks ago. Before Timu Puki converted a Norwich penalty. And then who pops up again? Jamie Vardy as he assists Mark Albrighton in the 76th minute to clutch them the win. Other than that, stats were pretty even with Leicester having the lion's share of possession around 55%. But believe it or not, Norwich actually had more shots at goal than Leicester. Um, that's shots 
in total and shots on target. It was 14 to 9 and 4 to 3, which probably isn't expected. But um, at the end of the day, Leicester are the ones who come away with three points. And Norwich sit above Arsenal in 19th in the Premier League table based purely on um, goals scored and conceded. Now, this fixture is going to be hard to talk about because I actually went to the game. This is a picture of me and my good friend at the game. He has never been to a Premier League fixture that hasn't finished in a draw. And he tells me this when we're 1-0 up. Then Palace equalise. Pablo Fornells put us up 1-0. Super happy. Mikel Antonio in my fantasy team gets the assist. Even happier. Before Conor um, Gallagher, the low knee from uh, Chelsea, pegged back West Ham and brought Crystal Palace level 1-0. So I'm then looking at my good friend Vinny and I'm thinking, why have you done this to me, Vinny? Why would you tell me? We're, we're on a 100% winning start. You know, we're playing fantastic football. And then Mikel Antonio comes up with the goods, albeit a bit lucky as it bounces back on the, off the back of his head and he goes for on goal. Great strike, though, to finish. And literally, like 60 seconds later, I think it's like 30 seconds later, and the Gallagher equalises. And I have to sit there. As this game finishes 2 all with assist coming from Christian Benteke of Crystal Palace. Gallagher looks like the one to pull the strings at Crystal Palace, so it might be worth keeping an eye on him as he's around 5.5 million um, and he might be the key playmaker and assister for Palace going forward. Finally, we move to the Liverpool-Chelsea game, which was hotly contested to be the fixture of the season so far, with both of these title contenders wanting to show dominance. As Liverpool hosted Chelsea at Anfield, the game swung in Chelsea's favour as Kai Havertz scored in the 22nd minute before Reese James's handball saw him get sent off now i don't think it was necessarily a red card and a penalty it's a bit like if a keeper brings someone down the double jeopardy rule i i kind of feel like this should have applied here um but subsequently mohammed salah as as you would expect puts the ball past mendy to make it one all and from then on out it just became chelsea sitting deep but being resilient as liverpool tried to break them down this fixture ending one all i was brave enough to captain salah and it paid off so i'm happy about that Coming over to Sunday, I did get a bit of a re revenge on Vinny after he told me about his curse as I had convinced him to transfer out Chris Wood uh, this week because he had a couple of free transfers and Chris Wood went and gave Burnley the lead against the lead side on the road before Patrick Bamford equalised in the 86th minute and as he said, it wasn't the most beautiful of goals but it was a striker's goal as he poaches uh, with five minutes left on the clock. This fixture finished 1-0 with Matthew Loughton getting the assist for Burnley. Tottenham have literally had the perfect start to the Premier League season. They've played three, they've scored three, they've conceded none, and they've won three. Nuno Espirito Santos' men are doing the business at the moment. And you can't even necessarily say they haven't had the hardest of fixtures because they faced reigning champions um, Manchester City sorry, in game week one. Song Hyun Min's free kick was the difference that kept... Tottenham and Watford apart but the scoreline wasn't entirely representative of the game as Tottenham had just under 58% of possession and had 15 shots to Watford's nine. Finally the team that has been grabbing all of the headlines over the past week were one of the teams definitely the, the team in the Premier League and that is Manchester United with Cristiano Ronaldo's transfer having been announced you've got to think what does that do for their goal scorer and match winner Mason Greenwood. It's probably going to be good for him in the long run to have such a professional and a phenom playing alongside him and training with him and it can only bode well for Mason Greenwood in the future with the two-year deal that has been announced for Cristiano Ronaldo and Manchester United but Mason Greenwood's the one on the books again as he leaves Wolverhampton Wanderers scratching their heads thinking when are we going to get a point Wolverhampton Wanderers have had the exact opposite season to Tottenham so far where they have played three scored none conceded three and have zero points it's the complete reverse and somehow they're still not bottom of the table however don't let that fool you whilst Manchester United have 56% of the possession Wolverhampton Wanderers did have 15 shots to United's 10 and had six on target to Man U's three um, Adama Traore and Trincao probably should add opportunities where they could have scored so they didn't look the most defensively resilient Manchester United but at the end of the day they did keep a clean sheet and I'm a happy boy because I had Luke Shaw in my team and speaking of Manchester United defenders, of course, new boy Raphael Varane was the assister to Mason Greenwood's goal. But now we've gone over the fixtures, let's have a look at the team of the week and see who turned up. 
Speaking of Manchester United's defence, who else would you expect in goal other than David De Gea as he manages to keep a clean sheet, as well as making five saves to pick up seven points, which just edges Hugo Lloris out, who picked up six points this week, and it's the first time the Frenchman hasn't been in the starting 11 of the team of the week. The man I mentioned as well at the end of the fixture recap, Raphael Varane, finds himself in the team of the week with 12 points. He's picked up a clean sheet and an assist giving him all three bonus points, totaling a lovely 12 points. So it looks like I fixed my attention on the wrong Everton defender this season as I went for Luca Digne when Seamus Coleman is the one getting in the team of the week with 10 points as he picks up an assist and a clean sheet, just like Rafael Varane did. But due to the goal scorers in his team and there being numerous assisters and goal scorers, he only got one bonus point this week um, in the 2-0 win away to Brighton. He's priced at 5 million, he's only in 1% of all fantasy Premier League teams. So if you've got this guy, well done to you. And his fixtures look amazing for the next seven weeks bar one game. We've already spoken about how Tottenham have been pretty defensively sound. So next up, who other than another Tottenham defender, Sergio Reglion, comes in with nine points after keeping a clean sheet and surprisingly actually, with no assist and no goal to his name, picking up all three bonus points in the 1-0 home win to Watford. He's a man who's gone slightly under the radar, picking up seven points game week one, six points game week two, and currently sits as the second highest scoring defender in Fantasy Premier League at the moment. Moving swiftly on to midfield, who else would you expect in Team of the Week other than a Manchester City midfielder? As Ferran Torres picks up two goals, one assist, and a clean sheet alongside two bonus points, he walks away with a whopping 18 points in one game week. Next up was a man who broke my heart at the weekend thinking West Ham could start their fantastic season and just push that one further up, but we couldn't. Conor Gallagher. I don't want to sit on this guy too much. He scored two against us. We shouldn't have even conceded goals like that, but fair play to him. Two goals, got him three bonus points, 15 points this week to this lad. Next up is Buendia, who is actually unavailable against Chelsea in game week four due to quarantine regulations, so he's not expected back until September 18th. However, he picked up a goal in Aston Villa's draw against Brentford, and he walks away with 10 points this week. Another man who picked up 10 points this week is Heung-Min Son, as his free kick continued Spurs' perfect start to the season, as we mentioned earlier, and he got two of the bonus points. He's now scored in two of Spurs' last three Premier League games, and has relatively decent fixtures upcoming. Now, if Manchester City are scoring five and their midfielder's involved, you can probably bet that their striker's involved. And I say their striker, their only striker. Gabriel Jesus, after picking up two assists in the 5-0 thrashing at Norwich, he picks up one more assist against Arsenal, as well as a goal um, to just say, why not, you know? I can assist, I can also score. Pep Guardiola, don't leave me on the bench again like you did in game week one, because when I start, you win games 5-0 back to back. Listen, it's just a fact, all right? 12 points for this Brazilian wonder kid. Next up is an existing Premier League golden boot winner in Jamie Vardy, as his goal and assist puts him on 12 points as he finally finds some more form to go with his goal from game week one. He gets 12 points this week, thanks to the three bonus points that he also picked up. Finally, a bubble that I hope never fades and dies is Mikel Antonio, as he puts another goal and another assist on the score sheet. That's eight attacking returns in three game weeks. Wow. 40 points already. Clear of Mohamed Salah by 10 points. I'm doing my best not to get carried away. We have played Newcastle and Palace, but then we did have a Leicester fixture in there as well. And they're known to be, you know, they're probably one of the, the big six clubs in the Premier League now. It's going to be interesting to see how we bounce back from the Jamaica game, where he would normally have that break, that international break, whether this keeps him fit, whether he picks up an injury. So this will be interesting to see what happens. So that rounds up your team in a week now, guys. And all we've got to do now is look at the risers of the week and the droppers. Let's see who's ended up where. So the league's getting busier and busier. There's now 27 of you in the league. So thank you, everyone, who has joined so far. Let's start with the bottom half of the table. So we have Charlie at the bottom of the table who did miss game week one where the average score was 69 points. So if we add that to his current total, he's going to be sitting on around 136 points. Now you would think that this puts him above Edgar, but Edgar also missed game week one. So if we give him 69 points on top of his tally, he would be on around 192 points actually. So it would be a lot higher up in the table. It's Kieran down at the bottom of the table as well, but he didn't play game week one and he's on 133 points already. So with the 69 points from game week one, he'd be on around 202 points at the moment, which would put him around middle table in the mini league, which means we have a new king of bottom of the table. And you know what? I don't even feel bad after what you did to my team this weekend. It's the guy you saw in the photo with me earlier, Vinay. 55 points this week. What's going on, Vinny, mate? 
Accompanying Vinny at the bottom is Arsenal fan Dan. So this week he's been a bit smarter, and as an Arsenal fan, even he benched all three Arsenal players in his team. Fortunately, he did have Reese James, but he was smart enough to captain Mohamed Salah like myself. Dan, if you're watching, you really need to up your game, mate. And also down at the bottom, we've got Max. I'm not sure what's going on with his team as well, as he only picked up 44 points this week. Now let's turn our attention to the top of the table. We had some new entries last week, which give it a bit of a shake around, but smashing it still is Dark Knight. Skibby is running away with it. He's currently... 28 points clear at the top he got 71 points this week brave enough to captain antonio was rewarded for it as antonio was the highest point scorer in his team this week as well so he maximized those points got an extra two points by captain in antonio instead of someone like mohammed salah has greenwood in his team as well who did get that attack in return that we discussed earlier too this this is just huge New entry Bradley maintains his highest status in the league as he actually moves up into second place with 68 points this week. And that sees Aikens drop down into third. New guy Marthus comes in and takes away the top four spots from me as he jumps over me with his total score by four points. Four points while I'm coming back. We've got Mason coming up as well with a big 78 points this week, which puts him back into contention of pushing back into the top five. So let's see how he does. Now you thought I was going to stop there. I can't leave out the most important topic this week. And that's this man who's on screen next to me right now. Cristiano Ronaldo. He's in the game. Cristiano Ronaldo comes in at 12.5 million, which is the joint most expensive player in the game with Mohamed Salah. But it is worth noting that he is a striker. So every goal he gets is going to be awarded with four points instead of five like Salah would get. However, it is easier for him to pick up bonus points if he is scoring. We all know what an absolute goal machine that Cristiano Ronaldo is. And he has proved this in every league that he has been in so far. The three seasons he spent in the Premier League, he picked up 17 goals, 31 goals and 18 goals before his transfer to Real Madrid, where we all know his record. And he continued that over in Serie A as well, for those of you that may be concerned by his age. He picked up 29 goals in the Serie A last season in 33 games. And the season before that, he got 31 goals in 33 games. So he's proven he still can do it in a competitive league and he hasn't run off to a farmer's. There are a couple of things that you need to consider about Cristiano Ronaldo, but we are going to cover them in the game week four preview. So make sure you keep an eye out for that. And that video is probably going to go up on Friday, the 10th of September at around 5.30 p.m. So if you're not subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button now if you want to see that video and make sure you turn on notifications so you don't miss it when it goes live. Anyways, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this and um, I'll see you on Friday for the game week four preview. Much love. Take care.